there are various virtual appliances which are available those virtual appliances can be imported directly into the proxmox virtual environment so these virtual appliances are most of the times called ova ova is open virtual appliance and when you export for any virtual machines from any platform it is also most of the times exported as ova when you export them into ova suppose i'll give you one of the examples i am using vyos which is one of the best open source routing and firewall platform i have provided the details of this in the link so if you click on download i can download for various platforms vyos is available as a virtual appliance for these all virtual platforms so which means that you can simply get that virtual appliance and import it into your proxmox or any virtual environment suppose i'll be downloading this particular virtual appliance which is predominantly made for the vmware so suppose the file has come from vmware and now you want to bring that into your proxmox virtual environment that is also possible so i will not be downloading it for kvm kvm is of course native which is supported by the proxmox so proxmox will be using kvm but will not be using kvm i'll be downloading it for the vmware or it has been exported from the vmware now we'll be importing that into the proxmox i'll be clicking on download and i'll be downloading vyos 1.3 for vmware and here is 1.3.5 for vmware and i'll click this download all right so download has been completed this is the file which is downloaded and its extension is ova so i have given it the name demo underscore vm so now what we'll need to do we'll need to of course upload this virtual appliance which is 355 mb to the proxmox let's go to the command line interface of proxmox and run the commands from there and i'll click on pve shell and here there are various folders of course which are available inside the proxmox virtual environment if i take you to the storage in the data center if i show you storage and this is local lvm and if you see the path of this this is var lib vz so i'll try to save most of the files inside var lib vz and i'll create a folder there and i'll be importing or uploading all the files here so let me create a folder here i'll just go to shell of node so i'll be changing the directory cd space var slash lib slash vz which is the default path for the proxmox dumps and images so if i see here you can see the list of all the folders which are available here dumps images pf sense and templates i'll create a new folder so it will be mk dir and i'll give it a name called upload so you can see here now upload folder is created of course in upload folder there is no file right now cd space upload and ls so list of files there is no file available right now so i'll be uploading this ova file which is demo underscore vm dot ova of course it could be any name i have renamed it and now the name is changed here through win scp i'll be able to access all the files so on left side you can see my local files on right side you can see the files which are available on proxmox and you can see on home directory from home directory you can go to var lib and vz inside this we created a folder called upload so in upload folder i'll be uploading this particular file which is demo underscore vm dot ova and i'll be uploading this all right so upload has completed so demo underscore vm dot ova is imported here this is of course compressed open virtual appliance so open virtual appliance is available here now if i see the list of files you can see here demo underscore vm dot ova is available now this ova file will contain the disk file also and it will also contain the configuration of the virtual appliance so that configuration is called ovf we'll extract this and to extract we'll be using tar command x v f and here i'll be uh, specifying the name it will be demo underscore vm dot ova you can see here it has extracted all the files so one file is ovf and you can see here this is vmdk which is the disk of the virtual appliance so if you see here i'll just refresh this again here you will see the list of files which are created and disk file is 360 mb and here this is ovf file which contains all the information of a virtual machine so you can see here it has list of all the logical networks list of all the wan network interface lan interface and the cpu details and then it has also the disk details so vm disk it is showing you that from where the vm disk will be created all of this information is available here you don't need to read of course this is the file which has been created so when the vmware appliance was created so that file comes from there so you don't need to read anything from here this is simply in for the information i am sharing it with you so that you get a better understanding 
that what you are exactly importing. So OVF file is an information of the virtual machine and based on this information, we'll be creating the virtual machine into our Proxmox virtual environment, which will be using these other files also and that this disk file also. Before I run the command of importing that VMware virtual machine into my Proxmox, so I'll be just showing you what storage devices I have available. So I'll be clicking on data center and in data center, if I click on storage, you can see all these storage devices are connected. And this one is local LVM, which is LVM thin. It supports disks and images. This is my Google Drive. Of course, it supports backup disk images and I can, of course, add more also. TrueNAS is also available. It uh, also supports the disk images. But of course, I'll not be using any disk image on the NAS or on the network. So I'll be using the local storage for the purpose of using disk images because it will, of course, give the better performance. And this particular local LVM, which is LVM thin, this is not right now supported for any other disk formats other than raw. So if you want to know what is raw disk format, what is QCOW2 format or what is VMDK format, I have provided the link in the description. I'm creating raw disk format for all my virtual machine disks. The reason is the performance. If your VM needs a better performance, read and write performance on the disk, so without compromising on the performance, on the speed, so you can use the raw disk format. If I take you here to local LVM, you will see here VM disk. So all these are into the raw format. But if you see here in the virtual machine, which I'm trying to import, it has the disk in the VMDK format. This LVM is not supporting right now because I have not configured it to support any other disk format. So if I try to create any virtual disk inside uh, any virtual machine, for example, this is the virtual machine. And if I try to go to hardware and add a new disk or I want to add a new hard disk into this. And if I choose the storage, which is local LVM, you can see here that the format is locked, which means that other than raw, I cannot create any other format. Of course, if I'm allowed to create the disk into any other storage, now for example, TrueNAS, which is supporting me to create the VM, I can of course create the disk into this. Here I can also use QEMU or even VMware disk format as well. But of course, it will not give me better performance. One is that it will be adding more information to the disk. So that's the reason the performance will be reduced. And of course, these will be stored on my network, which, which I don't want. I want to create inside the local LVM. So which means that a raw disk image will be created once I import the virtual machine into my Proxmox virtual environment. All right, so enough talking. Let us go back to shell. I will now import this virtual machine or open virtual appliance into my Proxmox environment using the information which is available in OVF. I'll type the command QM, which is for quick emulator or KVM. This is, of course, the Linux command. And here I'll be doing import OVF, which is open virtual file format, which is this one. And what will be the virtual machine number? So I'll be giving it a name 301, which I'll be using this series whenever I import any VM. So I will know that, okay, these machines were imported as an appliance. From where I'll be creating that machine? So I'll be creating that machine, of course, from this particular file, which is VYOS 1.3.5 cloud in it, VMware OVF. So I'll be copying this and I'll paste it here. Now, one thing that you have to see here, complete path can also be typed. I can, of course, type the path here slash VAR slash LIB slash VZ and here, which is this path. And then I created the folder called upload and then slash it will bring the data from there. I'm just in the same path right now. So I don't need to enter the complete path where you want to now attach this disk, which is VMDK because machine will be created. Of course, it will have a disk. So where that disk will be stored, as we know that it will be into local LVM. So I'll be typing the storage name here, local dash LVM. And now, most important part, if I just enter this, what it will do, it will create the machine and it will import the disk and it will attach that disk directly into the virtual machine. It will also change the format of that because VMDK is not supported by the storage device. It will automatically change that. If your storage supports multiple disk formats, so you will be mentioning that. So I'll be mentioning that here. I'll be mentioning that which particular format you want to use. So I'll be typing double dash and format and then I'll be choosing raw. Of course, you can use VMDK, QCOW2 or you can use raw because both of them is not supported. Raw is supported. So I'll be typing this and this is it. I will not use any other extension. Of course, you can use also dry run. So if you do dry run, 
space yes if there is any error it will show me but right now there is no error so ovf manifest already has the name so it is not able to use that otherwise everything else is fine so it will create the qm and it will use 148 cores of cpu and it will use these many bytes of the ram and the virtual disk size will be this much 10 gb and scuzzy 0 will be used i'll see this command again and i'll be just changing the extension it will be format of the disk which will be raw and press enter now it will start creating the virtual machine and it will import that disk you can see here that 10 gb disk will be imported here it will be attached that's it we are done with it if you see here that 301 machine is being created right now and i can see all the information here I'll simply need to do few changes here. Of course, the VM will not uh, directly start because there are some problems, the RAM and the CPU. So what I'll do, I'll simply go here to hardware and in hardware, I'll be changing the memory. Memory will be 1024 MB. And in the processor, I'll be using two core processors. And if I go here to the disk, you can see here, disk is already attached. It is already linked. And if I go here to options and boot order, so you can see here it is already connected and it is already boot is already enabled and i'll just show you once again local lvm you will see here vm disk and here you can see for 301 the disk is 10.74 gb and the format is raw so virtual machine is created i'll simply start this machine go to console and we'll see that the machine will start running vmware virtual appliance is now running here in the proxmox virtual environment i'll just enter this and you will see without any error the machine will start working so this was all about creating the virtual machine or importing the virtual machine from any existing virtual appliance to the proxmox virtual appliance so for this tutorial we have used the vmware file format or vmware image but it could be any v image which has the ovf file ova is open virtual appliance and ova is supported by almost all the virtual environments today Proxmox is also supporting that. So in this video, we used the OVF file, which was the configuration file of the VM. And based on that configuration file, it automatically created the virtual machine. It configured the necessary hardware, whether it is bus, drives, network, and all of that has been created. In next video, I'll show you how we can create the virtual machine. And I'll show you how we can attach that VMDK directly to the machine without using the OVF file.